Hello, welcome to Garden Chronicles. I'm James David and I'm actually living in a tropical garden around Malaysia region. In today's video, I'll be talking a little bit more on this particular plant known as Chaya plant, which I've actually covered a lot of details in my first video and this is actually an extension video in my part 2. Here I'll be covering more on the plant detail, especially the flowers, the seed pots and the way the plant grows, also the pro propagation style and methods which I have wanted to cover here in this particular video. Now coming to the main feature is plant identification and this is very important because what I've noticed and I found and in research in the factor is that most of the plants in these kind of features tend to be on a dangerous zone where it can be toxic or poisonous so plant identification is very important factor which i want to take note of if you were given a plant to you by a seasoned gardener and mentioned to you that this is actually a chaya plant then with all means it is good enough to know in a way to identify it as looking for the similarities here as plant identification but let's say if you were to find something in the wild or you're not sure or somebody uh, given to you without any proper information so i would exercise a very strong note of caution because a lot of the plants that appears to be like this can be poisonous here i want to make mention of the flowers for this particular plant if you notice that it has a more on a white kind of flower it's actually pure white and it does have more a cluster based kind of a, a features and in most cases it appears to be more of an upright position and it appears to be more of inflorescence kind of features and one of the things that i want to notice i want to mention is that these flowers do not have fragrance and in most cases these are the pollinators that actually we see this particular plant is actually butterflies i've not seen any bees coming and visiting upon these flowers so i'm not sure could be an element where it could be in the factor of toxicity where i can say that because this is more on a aerobia species where the sap is identified as a uh, poison uh, feature on this particular plant now coming back to the seed pot these flowers do form in the seed pots that comes after pollination and what i noticed that these seed pots appear to be greenish kind of a uh, more on an ovalish shape and the unique factor about it is that they do not form a fruit in a way i can say that once they appears to be dried up it appears to be more like a coffee bean kind of features uh, there is no uh, water base in a way to say like a fruit kind of thing that something eats this and eventually this particular plant actually dries off the seed pot on the plant and the whole stem and stalk actually hangs on the plant i've also noticed that they do not self seed in a way to say that because there's a lot of formation of the seed pot falling down and i've not seen any of it actually uh, sprouted so in a way i can say that uh, seedlings or sort of like this seeds may need to be cultivated in a way like carefully uh, propagated in a way to use maybe sphagnum moss or perlite and a proper watering kind of thing for them to sprout otherwise i find that it's much more economic and faster and easier to use as cutting because i find it it is very close to 100 percent success rate when it comes to this particular plant for propagation using cutting base uh, propagation style However, I must say that it does have a unique factor when it comes like an ornament plant. Maybe I have an idea if I thought I would trim all these things and put it in a vase or in a way to have a plant decoration kind of thing because it's quite unique and it's in a way to say that exotic look, more of a berries formation in an upright manner. Coming to the plant feature, if you notice this particular root ball at the base of the plant, the trunk if you notice this is actually one plant that means the whole tree the whole shrub is actually comes from this particular base and i find that the element of being hardy in a way to say that due to the factor when it comes to my weather here is that when it rains it really pours in the wind and everything is very strong somehow i find that this particular plant has a very good grip when it's planted in a 
uh, ground factor and i can say that uh, based on experience in a way i check with other gardeners who actually grow them in a potted plant it seems appear to be that the plant remain dormant or stunted and the growth is not vigorous as if you were to plant it on a ground kind of a feature and this is one of the things that i want to mention is that if you are in the intention of consuming this plant and you want to have a, a very good harvest do plant them on ground instead of potted plants here i want to show to you how i propagate this particular plant and if you notice that i normally cut them more on this kind of size it, it often i would suggest to strip off, strip off the leaves at the bottom maybe just leave a crown a little bit of leaves on it uh, here i'm actually giving to a friend who also want to consume the leaves so in a way that it's easier for them to actually use it as it appears to be more fresher in this uh, stem now one of the things here is a, a question that uh, someone would ask uh, is it uh, good if you can actually plant it using a green uh, stem cutting or is it more on the brown stem cutting somehow i will suggest to use the top crown in a way to say that make sure that it's green not too green as is it's sort of like about six inches but at a more about uh, in the level of 1.5 feet kind of thing uh, all in, in this size because I find that if it's too short it may not survive and it's too long it may take a longer time to root and in cases that some cases where this particular plant may not survive if the stem is very matured so and this is one of the things that I find that, and one of the things that's very easy is just strip off the leaves and just poke it into a potted media or a ground level. I would suggest is not to immediately expose it to sun and rain first because it can be stressed out. So it's best to plant it in a pot, let the root ball pick up uh, and once that is an established, transfer it into the open environment where you receive good sunlight and rain. Another factor which I have yet to experiment is to root them in a water-based kind of thing. However, do take note that not to leave it too long in a water base because it will sort of form water root and the transition between water root to uh, potting medium may not be successful and the whole plant can stress out and die. Another factor of growing this is to also trim off the flower buds and then the seed pods off because it may be also be too taxing for the plant to maintain both of this uh, situation and in a case sometimes the plant may actually use all of its resources on the flowers or the seed pot and may not focus its growth on a root ball another most important thing that i would like to mention here is practice caution when you actually trimming this plant because the sap can uh, cause itchiness or even burns in your hand if you are sensitive having sensitive skin so i would really recommend to wear a glove and in my case when i was actually doing this i did not pay attention to it and i actually used the cutter and continued to cut did not realize that the sap actually touched my skin then i started to have within few minutes a sensation of a slight itchy feeling with a slight uh, burning sensation which lasted about less than 30 minutes and i did try to wash it off but it really didn't help so what i actually suggest uh, in my home remedy is to apply uh, any cooking oil or vegetable oil or even olive oil at the area nicely rub upon your skin and leave it for a few minutes and wash off your hand with soap i believe the sap is actually very sticky and sort of it forms like a gum kind of residue on the fingers or your hand and that is the cause of the itchiness and itchiness and burns so this is a sort of like a home quick remedy in in a way to counter the sap attack now of course this is not a, a doctor's advice or something like that if you have experienced severe burns or anything like that i would really truly recommend to wear gloves in a way that if you were to make cuttings from this otherwise in the worst case scenario please visit a doctor and get medical attention i've now come to the end of my video 
and i would really appreciate if you can click like subscribe and also if you can do put in your comments if you will have any queries concerning chaya plant and i will gladly answer you based on my experience here if you notice that i just want to took a video a quick video on the pollinators that visit my garden and i find that it's quite intriguing to find a lot of butterflies actually visit this particular plant and of course the video is not very clear because the butterfly seems to uh, keep their distance away from me and being cautious and alert at my presence another final note here is that i've actually placed in the video here when it rains and i find that one of the features here is quite interesting and i hope you enjoy the scene and also see hear from you soon and take care have an enjoyable day bye